Arizona is facing a serious uh, physician shortage already as it is, and that is particularly in uh, the areas of primary care and most particularly in the area of family medicine. With more and more people coming to the state, we're going to need more and more doctors. We already have one of the smallest per capita uh, physicians to patient ratios. And if we continue to lose physicians, continue to lose training programs, you can guarantee that that availability of physicians to patients is going to go down. There was a, a lot of very difficult decisions that happened at the state legislature in order to be able to try to balance the budget, which certainly isn't balanced and it's going to look bleaker for the upcoming years. And one of the cuts that uh, the decision to be made was to kind of wipe out GME funding, which is graduate medical education. Well, the cuts right now to family medicine are, are really you know, hurting our, our pipeline, trying to get doctors coming into the state. Uh, we also not only get funds from the state, but there's a match on the federal level as well. Uh, that means a loss of millions of dollars to a lot of the institutions here in the state of Arizona. It's well known that individuals tend to practice within 50 to 75 miles of, of where they did their training. If you don't have spots for family medicine residents to train in the state of Arizona, we're not going to meet the needs of our state. Because of the potential impact on family medicine programs, family medicine as a specialty in hospitals that have multiple programs tends to be most at risk for closure because our budgets are tighter. We don't have big ticket procedural items that support us clinically. And uh, and so family medicine programs are very possibly going to close in the years ahead in our state. One of the things that we're having a lot of trouble with right now is access to care, getting folks in to see, uh, see doctors, not only Medicare patients, but also uh, people with commercial insurance. They're having trouble finding a doctor, they're having trouble getting that continuing care. A lot of the people are having to go to the urgent care to get their blood pressure treatment, where really that's episodic and, and not really optimal care. One of the things that's also happening with our recession is actually more people are qualifying for, uh, for uh, Medicaid because they don't have a job now. And uh, one of the difficulties that's ha happening is we don't have enough docs to see the patients we have right now. And if we don't have the replacements available, then it makes it even more difficult. We already have a huge problem with primary care availability to Medicare patients, especially that they haven't fixed the SGR formula. By not allowing primary care, to, uh, primary care physicians to train here, we're going to lose that primary care base and therefore less availability to Medicare patients going to make it more and more difficult for those individuals to, to have access to a family physician and what that's going to mean is more ER visits, more urgent care visits, less continuity of care which leads to poorer outcomes, higher costs, uh, unnecessary hospitalizations um, and uh, just poor overall outcomes for those patients. I would urge the governor and the legislature to reconsider uh, health impact of the budget cuts that are on the table. Uh, none of this has been publicly debated, and I believe uh, the impact will be very real for docs on the front line in emergency rooms, hospitals, family medicine offices. The governor really needs to recognize the importance of keeping graduate medical education dollars in this state and allowing the local programs to train those physicians, not only in primary care, but, but in so many other specialties. And I think that we need to have the people and the citizens of this state call their governor and call their local representatives to make sure to keep the GME dollars in, uh, going inside the budget, do not eliminate them, recognize the importance of, of that program. We know that primary care is the best, most cost effective way to provide health in our communities, health care in our communities. What are you doing today to support the primary care infrastructure in my state?